tutorial, you are going to learn how to create font and then make font into a shape. So if you remember last time, this was our shape here, right? The shape was created with an outline. That outline was made up of anchor points. So I can see here all my individual anchor points here. If I grab these guys here, oops, I can pull it like this. I can change the shape and all sorts of fun stuff. Now for this font exercise, what we're going to do, sorry, I got to click onto one individual one. There we go. Um, you'll also notice these little bevel hooks here. If I push these in like this, I can curve the individual place as well, just like so. All right, so what we're going to do is for our font here, you might start with just a shape, right? So you might have something like the text tool like this, right? The type tool. I'm going to click here, and I can see it's very, very small right now. If I go to my properties window, I can see that my uh, font down here, let me pull this down a little bit lower. It's 12 point, I can change this to a bigger point size to start with, so let's go to 60. Uh, this is just some Greeking here, some ridiculous words that don't mean anything, so I'm gonna put in um, this word here, great, right? And then just like Microsoft Word, I can highlight this word, and again, here are my properties, so the fill color of my letter is gonna be red now, and the stroke color of my letter is going to be uh, dark blue. There we go. And I'm gonna bring the stroke up a little bit so I can see it just like that. Use my selecting tool. So here it is. So here I made the stroke so thick that I can't even see the purple. So what I'm going to do is I can grab this letter here and I can also stretch it out just like so. All right, I'm going to reduce the stroke on this a little bit so I can see it. There it is. Uh, or I can just, I can here it sort of makes a, a mockery of my uh, font size here. Um, but I can change it this way too or I can just grab it. I can stretch it this way. I can stretch it this way. Just remember, if you want to keep it in proportion, if I hold down the shift key on my keyboard when I grab this, it'll keep it in proportion as I work. So right now, this character set just works as an object. I can come back in here with the text tool. If I carefully come in here like this, I can add more letters. I can do whatever. I can use this uh, selecting tool again and sort of move those things around. If I want to change the font, I just highlight it. I go to my drop-down window here, and there are all sorts of different fonts here. You can see it changes just like so. All right, but what I might do is I might start with something simple like this uh, Arial Bold, right? And let's hold on the Shift key and bring this smaller. But now what I want to do is actually transform these letters individually. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select my letter set, my character set. I'm going to go to Type. I'm going to go to Create Outlines. And I've just outlined my shape. So now when I go to the Direct Selection tool and I click off of them and I click on one letter, I can bring this letter out. I can click on this, I can grab these little edge converters here, I can move my edges. I can click on an individual point in my spot here and I can grab this and I can pull it this way. I can pull it here, I can start to reshape these letters. Whoops, just make sure you grab the point. Like this, I can make it get like a mohawk or something like that. So it looks, uh, you know, like if I did punk rock was maybe my word and I could put a little mohawk on there. So that's how you can uh, rearrange these shapes. Now another thing you can do is let's say you make a line. So let's use, um, remember we had the pen tool over here, but let's use this one here which is the curvature tool. I'm going to click here, I'm going to click here, and this way when I put my point, before I set my point I can make a little curve like this which is kind of fun, like this, like this, like this, and like this. You can see here my fill is still active, so it's trying to fill it with that red shape, but instead I'm going to fill it with nothing. So I'm going to bring up my fill window here, I'm going to say nothing, now I have this line. If I want to get rid of this uh, little jaggedy guy here, I can go to my selection tool. Or I'll notice that there's shortcuts. So this is the V key is the shortcut to that tool. If I just hit V on my keyboard, it'll also select that tool. Now, properties, let's make the stroke of this line a little thicker, like so. Like that. So now this line acts just like the, the character set acted, right? Because this way, it's just a line, but then it has this the thickness of the stroke. But what I could do is if I like this shape, I could actually turn this into an outline as well. So if I go to, to Object, and I go to Path, and I say Outline Stroke, suddenly what just happened here, which is super cool, is that all of a sudden I have these... Oh, oops, I always forget to click off there. I have these editable points now, and I can actually edit that line, which again is super cool. There's a lot of flexibility with this particular program. Um, and then one other tool that I'm going to show you here is under the brush tool. Instead of using the paintbrush, if I use this thing that's called the blob brush tool, how this works is I can actually paint like this. And instead of making a line, what the blob brush tool does is it makes 
the shape, right? It's making a shape. So that is super cool too, because the line tool will just keep making lines over things. But what the blob brush tool does is it actually adds to your brush there, which is super, super cool. Uh, let's see, under tool options here, I can change the size of my brush here like this uh, to a point size. I can change the angle of my brush, the roundness, and I can also change the accuracy of it. So, you know, have some fun messing around with that. Here's the brush is really big. I can color all this in. So again, when I go with the selection tool, suddenly I made this into one entire shape here. So you really could sort of go to town and make some original shapes just using that blob brush tool. Um, a shortcut too to make your brush bigger and smaller is using the bracket keys next to the letter P on your keyboard. The one on the left makes it smaller, the one on the right uh, makes it larger. So there you go. Uh, that's a simple way to start your text together there. Again, remember when you select individual letters, you can start stacking them in different ways uh, by getting rid of the stroke on the outside of your letters, like so. You know, you can do a little bit of magic here where you can see those two become one, right? So you can mess with positive and negative space again uh, and sort of see what you get. So like this part in here, if you want to fill that in, I could use my blob brush like so and I'll make that a little bit smaller. The keyboard, again, the bracket key, and I can paint that in like that. I can sort of finish this off like this. There you go. And then if I look at it, this makes it into one piece or joins it together. And now this letter set is just one crazy looking letter. All right, there you go. Good luck. Enjoy.